Yeah, to the youth, especially the males, um, I want you guys to stop investing in gambling and invest in agriculture. Yes, because agriculture is the future. My message for Africans, old and young, is we shouldn't just think about now. Um, having traveled a lot, I left Nigeria when I was 17, so I've, traveled, I've lived outside Nigeria for almost 30 years now. One thing I see is that Africans, we think about what we can eat now. And that's one of the major problems, right? We need to think about the future. So thinking about the future will actually challenge you to be creative, to do something. Because now you see, like one of my brothers said, the youth should stop gambling. It's true, right? We need to sit tight and do what is right so that we can, you know, prevent things that will happen in the future that will not make us eat. So farming is going to provide food. In this happy for a very long time but today I'm super excited just because of where I found myself listen whether you like it or not the revolution is happening will you all agree with me that moving to Africa is more like a movement right now Yes. 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 Listen, I told you guys that when the diaspora come in here, they just don't come and sit home and enjoy, but they actually add value to the development of the continent. Agriculture is the future. Listen, have you guys seen real estate before? Yes, it's a lucrative business, but I never knew there is something we call crop estate. Forget about crop estate that is happening in here. There's something that I've never ever seen it before. That is what? The animal estate. This is how I'm going to call it. I don't know about them, but I'm going to have a conversation with them and they're going to tell me if this is a crop estate or animal estate. I feel like crying, man. Because the guys that are doing this, they're from different parts of the West, but they, are all ha they all have African roots and they decided to come back here and establish what you're saying. They're growing crops in here. They're also doing poultry. Now they are making noise. I don't even know what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like you are not a farmer. Uh, Isaac is farming for you. Farming for because me. you believe that agriculture is the future. Yes, yeah, so. See, these are crying because they said, that is here. That is here. <laughs> hey. I think this we need to so go outside. Here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you guys ready? I don't know why I'm so excited. Listen, do me a favor. Like this video now. Have you liked it? Thank you. One more time, share this video. Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can share this video, do it because I'm excited to share this episode with you and I really want everybody to have a piece of this episode. And let me tell you something, if today's your first time seeing this annoying face on your screen, my name is Wadamaya, your one and only annoying village boy who's on a journey to change the negative narrative of Africa and also celebrate African excellence. That is why I'm here to celebrate my brothers today. So come along and... The energy, please. Yeah. I need energy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What am I? I have never seen anything like this before. Are you guys doing real estate? No. 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 Is it crop estate? Yes. Yeah, basically it's close. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, animal estate? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. So I guess it's crop estate and animal estate combined together. That's yes. what it is. So whose idea is this? Yeah, it's, it's my idea, yeah, basically. And then he found this place because he traveled around Ghana. I was told that you discovered this land. Yes. How will you discover a land, man? Well, I'm a traveling photographer, so basically what I do is I travel around the country and then write about places and the rest. There are places that have lots of interesting things, but nobody hears about them, hmm. of, of, about those places. So what I do is, when I get to those locations, I pin the locations, spend some days, uh, mingle with the community folks and yeah, what have you. Then take the message out there, tell people about the new or the good things over there in the rest and how they can also invest in those areas. But you also have a farm in here? Yes, I have a farm. I have five acres down there. What are you cultivating? That's corn. 
Okay. Yes, and then after the corn, I'll go for chili pepper. The places I've been to exploit and the rest, I'm now going back there to replicate the same thing over there with regards to farming as well. I mean, you said this things like this are for white people. People, yeah. So true. why are you doing it then? Well, I'm doing this because I feel I, I always get fulfilled. And I also try to tell people how beautiful Africa is. You see, most people have that kind of notion that those in Africa live on trees and there's no internet, there's no this, there's no that. But I can tell you with in all humility, after traveling around, I realized Africa or Ghana for that matter, it's a very peaceful and beautiful place. That's Yes, I always tell people that just come in and experience right. the place here. Yeah. When I was in the US, you know, I knew that I was I was supposed to come back home and do something. I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to do, mm. but I knew that when I was young, I was always raising chickens, you know. And then I would be selling the, them to other people. You know, I, you know, I was I was I was in Kumasi, I was born in Kumasi. Okay. My house like work on the street, sell pure <laughs> water, shoe shine, everything. And how did you find yourself in America then? Oh. What got me over there was education. Okay. So, you know, but hard works always pay off. That's how I got myself over there. Nobody got me over there. <laughs> uh, hard working. Okay. Selling pure water and hard when working with my uncle. You know, in school, you know, I used to be dumb in the beginning. But I learned my way out. And I became the top student in my school. Okay. You know, and those route led me in the US. A round of applause, man. <laughs> you found yourself in the US yes. 15 years yes. and you decided to come back. Yes, I decided uh, wait, to come wait, back. wait. Uh, you know, I have brothers in <laughs> Ghana. Do, do you have an American passport? No, I have an American work permit. I have not naturalized, naturalized to become American. Yo, my brothers <laughs> are saying I should ask you if everything is okay with your brain, man. I mean, you went to America and decided to come back. And you're not living in the city. I see, even where he is. Is everything okay with you? Oh, see, someone just made a, a, a statement mm. long ago that the money is in the debt. You know? Wow. A lot of people think you just put on tie, go and sit in the office, that's when you can make money. I'm a, I'm a chemist, I'm a scientist. And that's the part when I say it, people think I'm crazy. I work in biodiesel, I'm one of the top biodiesel uh, experts in the US. <laughs> this guy will make us clap a lot today, man. A round of applause, man. Yeah. Whoa. See, and my brother here is the same thing. He's one of the top engineers in the I will universe. come to him. But nobody really can picture me that I will come back home Wow. and do something like this. Because my work over there was solving problems. You know, whenever there is problem with my biodiesel line and all those things. So I'm good at solving problems. And if I can do that somewhere, I do think that I can do that back home to hmm. improve the country. So that was what led me over here, to start something. Wow. You know, at least, I believe that if I start something and I focus, I can get it to where I want it to be. I will not let anybody determine it for me. So my <laughs> determination throughout my life is always focus and be determined. Hmm. Whatever you want to achieve, you can achieve. And you can see it for yourself. This is not the only place that I have. I have a farm here, I have a farm in Kumasi, a pig farm, and poultry farm too. You know, I have my, home, my own place in Accra. You know. So you are just into farming? Yes, I'm into farming. So now, you found 100 acres. Yes. You decided to share the 100 acres among your own friends? Yes. Are they your friends though? Are you all in America together? Yeah, they are my friends from different states, actually. You know how I came here? This man right here, yeah. I was sitting in the mall eating and then he came to me and he's like, what am I? I've lived in America for 30 years and I'm now back in um, Ghana because of me. And I'm like, no, it's not because of me, because of this guy. <laughs> no. My, bro <laughs> <laughs> My brother, yes. tell me something. You also own... Yes, I own a property here as well. Mm. Yes, I, I was in the U. I've, I've traveled for almost over 30 years. Wow. And uh, seeing videos of you, p people talking about what they are doing in Ghana, I I I've been amazed, especially in farming, crop farming, and animal farming. Mm. And that's 
looking at those videos each time, every time, again and again, I decided, no, I have to be part of that revolution. Wow. Being abroad for so many years, every time you come home for a visit, you feel like, yes, you feel like home. Yeah. So I said, no, I need, I need to leave all those things behind and come back and farm. So I'm farming here, poultry farming and also crop farming. What were you doing in the U.S.? Uh, hmm. I'm an aerospace engineer. We uh, make uh, engines for uh, Airbus and uh, Boeing. He decided to leave that yes. and come to the dead because yes. this guy told you that the money is in the dead. That's That's what, what if he's lying to you? My name is Hope. Hope? Yes. Hope, so this is your own portion? Yeah, eh? this is my uh, poultry farm here. How, how many acres are you farming? Uh, two, two acres. Two acres? Exactly. Uh, but how many beds are you doing? I have uh, over 1,500 beds. 1,500 beds? Yes. It's a, a lucrative business though. It is, yes. If, if you take uh, good care of it and you have a good manager who is taking care of it. Y your, name is, well. your name is Hope, which yes. means you are from? I'm from Ghana. Ghana. Yes, I was born here in Ghana, Accra. In Accra? Yes. Amazing. And how was life growing up? Uh, it was tough. Uh, my dad was in the military, so we were uh, farming with him as well. He, he came from the village in the Volta region, so we, we, he took us to his farm mm. whilst we were young. So we had, my mother was a trader, so we had to sell things on the, on, on, in the barracks. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's the only way you could do to uh, pay for your school fees. But apart from all that you could do in Ghana, mm. why you decided to choose poultry? Uh, I've been away for a long time, mm. 30 years, and I'm back. It's tough to get a job equivalent to what I, a degree I have. So there's no other jobs I can go into, and I think to be able to feed ourselves here, in Ghana, we have so many land here, a hmm. lot of uh, land here. Hmm. So the only uh, best option we have is to go into farming. And you think farming is lucrative? It's very uh, lucrative, yes. If you if you focus uh, your attention on what you are, you want to do, you 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 make it. Well, what has been the major challenge since you started? Uh, major challenge is buying a land and trying to get a, a, a genuine land. I tried getting uh, ten acres in Insawam. Oh, it's been horrible. It's been horrible. I have to give it up and come here rather. Because they don't tell the truth. It's difficult to find reliable people hmm. that you can trust. So it makes it very difficult. So when I saw my brother Isaac here, I decided to join him so that we can all work together. How do you feel whenever you come in here? Oh, they are like, uh, they are like my babies. <laughs> I love them so much. You love them so much? Yes. But I always miss them when I'm away. Are they laying eggs already? They are laying eggs. How yes. many this, eggs in a day? Uh, here they are laying about 17 crates a day. Wow. And I have another 700 over there. They are laying about 12 crates a day. What is the price of a crate? A crate is uh, around 27, 30 CDs. A crate, wow. yes. Do the calculation, man. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a millionaire. Now, now I want to be a farmer so badly. It's easy to be a farmer. It's easy to be a millionaire. It's easy, but now the feed is skyrocketing. The price of the feed is skyrocketing. So you have to be smart and know how to manage those things to make a uh, profit. Oh, That's okay. what we are. We are trying to figure it out now. Wow. We don't. We don't make our own feed. We buy it. So we are trying. In the future, we will have to make our own feed. I think that will cut, cut down cost. You brought this guy here? He doesn't yes. look like Ghanaian though. <laughs> he looks like Igbo Kwenu. Are you Igbo? I'm Yoruba. Oh, Yoruba? I know, but yes. people ah. think I'm Igbo because I'm yeah. Kilo Shele. More water. Like uh, ah, you see? <laughs> <laughs> but what are you doing in Ghana, man? Um, I think this is where I'm supposed to be at this point in my life. Wow. Um, so this man right here, the, hmm. the organizer of this whole thing happening. Okay. You know, I met him through Clubhouse. Okay. You know, talking about how him and his wife hmm. are helping people like us to start up business, okay. especially poultry farming. Wow. And they manage it. They send you information, how everything goes every end of the month and like that. Uh, but before that, I actually started out in Nigeria where I have two lands and I was renting a place with a thousand layers. And, um, you know, because of some reasons, I was like, you know what, I want to focus in Ghana, right? <laughs> And the first time I was here was last year, December, yes, yes. but they've been running the business for me. Wow. Right? So to cut the long story short, I have 2,000 beds in his penthouse. A round of applause, man. <laughs> 2,000 beds? 2,000 beds. Oh, wow. And um, I have two guys working for me. He manages everything still. Uh, but on the other side of the farm, yeah. I just purchased four acres. 
and I'm going to build my own business on that side. And we're trying to form a community here. Mm. And one of my driving force is come back home. Like he said, we are the one that can build home. There are people here that can. Yeah. But you know, I'm saying, you know, we have the dollar power, which is a fact. But for us to know where to put it is why we are here, right? To build, create employment. That's, mm. that's my joy to see people working, wow. making money and grow the economy of Africa. How do you feel right now? No, I mean, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish amazing. this all belongs to me. Yeah. But yeah. that's somebody's hard work. Yeah. This is 2,000 beds. I, um, I saw these beds for the first time last year, December, hmm. and uh, the connection was strong. I, I didn't know it was gonna be like that, but it was really, really strong. Like, and even picking the eggs, Man, <laughs> I can't explain it. You, you can't explain? Yes. Wow, this is beautiful, man. So I, I want to know, yeah, uh, as a Nigerian, mm -hmm. I mean, doing business with Ghanaians mm -hmm. that you've never even met, you just, I mean, get to hear of them on Clubhouse. Yeah. You trusted them that much? Yeah. I mean, for me, first thing, being a Nigerian, um, doing business in Ghana, I feel like we are one. Exactly. Uh, most importantly, we are all West African mm. people, you know. Mm. Um, I didn't have any problem because when I heard um, Isaac speak on Clubhouse, mm. it was him and his wife. And before I started, we had two meetings, right, via Zoom, yeah. just to get to know them, you know, background and everything, just to make sure I'm safe, yeah. right? But then I got to know these guys, they have an actual farm, a location, I sent my brother here to see him in Accra. <laughs> my brother was like, that guy is funny. We trust him, just do your yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah, so. Yeah. So which means you have 2,000 bets by yourself? Like, 2,000. So you rent this place? Yeah, I'm renting this place from Isaac. So Isaac rents them for you? Yes. Take yes. care of them for yes. you? Yes. And at the end of the month, you get your money? Yes. I mean, when they started laying, yes. You know. Wow. How long did it take for you to get your first money from Isaac? Six months. Six months. Pardon me, six months. Six months? Yeah, from day old chick to when they started laying, six months. And you, you say it's lucrative? It's a lucrative business. There's a lot of money in this. And also, you have to be careful because you can lose these beds anytime. So the biosecurity is very important. And whoever is taking care of them, you want to make sure they are feeding them at the right time, there's enough water. Now they are making noise. I don't even know what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like you are not a farmer. <laughs> Isaac is farming it for you. Farming for because me. you believe that agriculture is the future. Yes, yeah, so. See, these are crying because they said that is here. That is here. <laughs> hey, I think we this need to so go outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only challenge, you know, we face as people in the diaspora is you can't be so close as you want to. So I decided to come back for a year to really sit and see how people are managing things and all that. Mm. But it's been challenging, you know, because I can't get internet in whole to yeah. work. So I, have to, I had to go back to Accra. Ah. So I come back here every two weeks, one week, weekends to check, check and everything. everything is okay. yeah. So, so I, I want to know how many farms do you guys have in here? How many farms? Different people? Yeah, so mine and his, and there's another couple over there, their farm. So, and he is going to start his farm over there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we have this one over here. Yeah, Miss Jenny. There's another lady in the UK. She's about to start. So, so which yeah. means your farm is the diasporans coming back yeah. home to yeah. farm. To farm yeah. That's diasporans. We need, you know, we so, so, the community. So, so <laughs> they definitely, what's the name of the farm then? Uh, my farm is TWT, TWT farm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the whole, the whole estate. Yes. Yeah. So I will call it TWT Estate. And this is the meaning of TWT. Okay. Time will tell. Wow. So whatever you are doing, don't rush. Time will tell. surely tell mm -hmm. the story for you. But you, you don't sound like you're from America too. No, I'm a Ghanaian. Thank you. Please. <laughs> yeah, you, you and I are from this. <laughs> no, no, they, these guys are from America. Yeah, yeah forget about them, yeah? Uh, you, you have a farm where? Yeah, here? I have a cold farm here that I'm currently working on. Wow. So, like, why are you um, cultivating corn then? Um, I'm cultivating corn because um, there has been a food shortage in the country that we've seen around, and then 
um, also we need feed for mm. our chickens. So whilst my brothers are here doing the wow. poultry, I also need to supply them with corn that they need to make. See, these people they have dollars, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so when they come, tell them you don't charge Ghana cities. <laughs> charge them dollars, all right? It's my first time seeing the youth of Africa farming though. I mean, the youth of Ghana, we hate to farm. You guys also have a farm in here, right? Exactly. How many acres? Uh, we have six acres. Of six food. acres yeah. of corn? Yeah. Money. yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot? Yeah. yeah. Can you advise the youth of Ghana because they don't get it? I mean, are you a student? Um, yeah, I'm a student. You're done or you're still schooling? Um, I'm done, but I'm, I'm going to fed up. But now you see money, you're still going to fed up? Um, yeah, I need to better up my education, but not purposely to go back and work. But I just want to have a degree. You, you don't want to go and... F you, want, you just want a degree, yeah, but down. you don't want to use the degree to work? No, no. Why? Because no, no. the degree can give me the money that I want. Is farming giving you the money? More than that I want. <laughs> Then why are you going to get a degree then? Because uh, it's a waste of money. Use the money to invest in your farm. Actually, I want to get a degree because when I have a child, I need to encourage her to go to school and get a degree. So if I don't have it, I'm trying to talk to her. You know, in the youth of Africa, now we try to disrespect elderly people who are not, um, let's say, well-educated. So if I'm educated, I'm talking to my son or my daughter, he, will show, he or she will surely take it. But, but what, what about you, man? is the future mm. yes and um, I started this just about four months ago mm. and this is our first um, planting and I noticed the money involved the expenses and the income it's looking at my salary man it, it is within two months I'm getting about four times of that to be sincere so I'm not going to I'm just, I'm just going to finish my education that level 400 when I'm done with it I'm, I'm going back to farming do, do you think we're not educated enough about farming for us to think that agriculture is not for us oh because we're, when we're going to school they never told us that after school maybe you can start farming or you need to go look for a job and that's it yeah it's the way they've they've, they've painted farmers they've painted us in a kind of way that farmers are poor farmers uh, uh, you don't make a lot of money when it comes to farming but looking at the chinese looking at americans we, we are supposed to be the one feeding, uh, feeding the, the rest of the world because we have the land, we have... I just, I just realized this just recently. And with this, man, I'm not going back to, to teaching, going to teach in the class just to... No, I'm going back to farming, like, for real. What are you going to tell the youth of Africa, man? Man, whatever you're doing, just make sure you farm because food is going to feed the whole world and food is going to make you rich. You see, when you, when, you, when you look at the system nowadays, you see people, you see the way the, the price of fuel is increasing. And most people will be looking for clothes to buy, looking for fancy stuff to buy. But it is the food that will sustain you to get all those stuff. So I'll advise my youth to go into farming, any type of farming. What do you want to add to it? Um, I just want to tell everybody listening to me or watching me now that agriculture um, has a lot to do um, with Africa. Mm. I think so far so good. We have the, um, um, the, the, the virgin lands. We have thousands and thousands of acres that we, we aren't using. So what we will do is, um, growing up, they didn't tell us, our parents didn't tell us um, there is money in agriculture mm. because our parents were peasant farmers when we were coming up. But <laughs> growing up to see that um, you can actually make more than what a teacher who was teaching me then in school. I can make more than what he's, he was getting then. Then I think there's no need of me staying in the office waiting for somebody to pay me at the end of the month or maybe they might be giving me excuses whereby I can get uh, my salary just within a week. Wow. Yeah, I can get my salary just within a week. So I think... Tell me something, how was life growing up? Um, actually, life growing up wasn't easy. It was very, very tough for me personally on my side. Um, I've, I've been growing up <laughs> facing a lot of challenges. I grew up with a single mom um, who has to take care of uh, my elder brother and my elder sister. It wasn't easy at all, but um, I pictured the future early and then I have to divert uh, my course and then go into the, uh, the, the, the agri field, that is farming. So I chose planting and then 
it, it's helping me now. I've realized my future and my mom is 18. Everybody is 18, so... <laughs> I think... And your children will also eat, man. They, they, yeah. they, 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 they will not have to work to eat. Mm. Yeah, that is the, the kind of future I want to create for my children. They don't have to work in order to eat. Exactly. But they have to work in order maybe they, want, they need something extra for themselves. When I was young, for me when I was young, um, I do tell my father that I'm going to become a farmer. He said, no, become a doctor boy, hmm. become an engineer, become a pilot. Hmm. I was like, yeah, this, this is the future. But growing up and seeing how um, agriculture is, man, agriculture is the future. I'll say you're a visionary, eh? Yeah, a lot of people say that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the concept of starting an animal stroke crop estate in here is brilliant man yeah and i just want to know right now since you started it how many um how many acres are you farming on right now yeah, so right now that hundred acres that we rented we are doing it piece by piece so right now we have about six acres that we have already done we are going to do another 10 acres again okay so that we can harvest in sections you know because one thing that i learned doing this thing is if you try to do too much it will come down so you do it, you master it, then you increase it, and you move on. So the, basically that's what we are doing mm. yeah, with the corn. It's like you live in here too? Oh yeah, yeah this is my, my house over here. But yeah, I come here maybe once, um, well, once uh, every month or something. But now, you know in Africa you have to be around for a long oh, time okay. to see what is going on. So I live here and uh, my, my actual house is in Accra. What, what yeah. kind of um, poultry farm are you doing? So we have uh, layers okay. in there in that building over there now and we have broilers in here which is broiler parent stock and we also have a uh, layer parent stock over here and then we hatch our chickens in that incubator over here and i also let people around the area bring their eggs so that i can hatch for them okay you know, based on the breed of chicken that you are bringing then I charge you based on that. Wow, yeah. is the layer lucrative? Yeah, the layer chicken is lucrative, but here is the thing. You have to be focused on them, because chickens, since they are inside, there's a lot of sickness that can attack them, hmm. you know. So always, if you want to make a lot of money out of them, yeah. you have to make sure that all of them are laying, which is impossible. So mostly about 80% of them will be laying at a time. You know, if you do it right, and I will, I will focus on that word, if you do it right. You don't just buy the chicken, stick them in there and forget them. How many layers do you have in here for now? Yeah, so, so I told you that we rented some out to people. Okay. So all of them, it's not mine. Some are other people, because our, our, the building is big, as you can see. So I rented some, then we raised the chicken for them, we give them reports and everything. Mm. And I have close to 2,000 back there, which is mine. Mm -mm. And I, I have small, small ones that I hatched to, that I raised, and once they are, at uh, some a specific age, I sell them to people. Uh, maybe they don't want to come in, but there's customers over there, they are ready to buy the ones that I have raised to some point. Okay. And they have a van packed back there, I'm just going to load them up for them. Then they too go start their own farm. So basically that's what I do uh, around here. I want to know what are the challenges that you face since you started this business? Yeah, the challenges is, labor and finding uh, honest people to work with. You know, you find somebody you trust with all your money to do something for you, you turn, you just blink and they, they are gone. You know, that, I, that is one thing, but you know, it, it doesn't discourage me from doing what I need to do. Mm. I just learn from that, mm. find a different path to achieve what I want. Mm. You know, basically, you have to find right people to help you get what you want then you in turn, you help them get what they want. Yeah, so yeah, since we have layers, and this is where we keep our, all our eggs. Wow. Like over here. You mean you this eggs were produced right here? Right here. And How much is a crate? Right now on our farm, on sorted, we are going for either 27.5, between that and 30, 30 cities. Okay. De depend on the sizes. All right. You know, because everybody, like, this goes for farmers. Now they want everyone to sell the eggs at least from 30 cities going. So we sort the smaller ones out at least reasonably for other people. And there's still more eggs over here too. 
And how, how many do you, how, how many eggs does your um, yeah. layers produce? Yeah, so in a day, over here, we get close to about 70, the range, 70 to about 80 uh, crates a day. Yeah, yeah, 70 to about 80 crates a day. And that is just for the, the layers, the one that we eat. And we also have the parent stock. Their eggs is different. Actually, I just put them all in the incubator. Mm. Them two, they can lay about maybe 50 eggs a day. That's what I hatch and sell to people. Mm. And you can hear their chicks yeah. back there. Yeah. Where do we see TWT farms in the next 10 years? Yeah, so in the next 10 years, we are looking to have, like on our farm, more than maybe 20,000 to about, our cup maybe, we will not cap ourselves, but we're looking to have more than 200,000 plus chickens mm -hmm. over here. And to have other people to come and join us and do different kind of farming around, like tomato farm, mm -hmm. okra, onions, so that once we build a community around us, we can buy from each other and mm -hmm. we can also sell it to other people mm -hmm. outside. You know? So if the farm is inside and the community is around it, it's easy for everybody to come in to buy things and we generate money to build more and to build Ghana. Wow. Yeah. That is our future. Yeah. Do you all believe agriculture is the future? It is the future. Yes. Yes. Why are you saying it is the future? Because we have Africa, we have the land. The developed countries have no land and they are still making it. China doesn't have a land, but they are still producing anything they want to produce. We, we have land from here to, as I said earlier, land 7,000 acres from just from here to Togo. Togo. What are we doing with that land? Anything you put on the land germinates. Anything you do comes up. So what are we doing? What is the problem then? <laughs> we need people to go into farming. Why are we not into farming? People think farming is for the poor. And also because the government or people are not promoting the farming. We have to get, get it mechanized. So that we stop using the holes and all that. If it's mechanized, it's easier to, to just farm easily and then... But, but mechanizing it is expensive. We need to come together. Like this farm, this is what we are doing. Yes. We are all coming together. There are five of us now, all from abroad. We are working together. And that's how we can build the community. That's how we can put money together and grow. This is amazing. Yes. This is why Africa is not developed. That is it. Because is we are it? not united. We are not coming yes. together. Yeah, no. Listen, what you guys have done, yes. this is the unity of Africa that we're looking for. Yeah. He's from Kumasi, but he's a Ghanaian, eh? Yeah. He's a Nigerian, yeah? You have an African-American who has a farm in here. Yes. Listen, so which means that even the diaspora mm -hmm. and Africans on the ground mm -hmm. can work together. Because yeah. that's what you guys are doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, is it very important for the diasporans to bring their money together with Africans on the ground to work together? Because you, you guys live there. Yes. So I just want to know, is it so important or it's not? It's important. it's important. We have to do that. That's that's where we can get the uh, the money. The dollar the dollar is heavy. You know, the more we get that, we can we can invest into uh, the f into the farm, into the machinery, and then develop the uh, country. You lived abroad for thirty years. Uh, thirty over thirty years. Why did you come back? I want to be part of the uh, story. And do you think it's worth it to move to Africa? It is worth it. Yes, it's worth it. Hundred times. Million times. <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen? What have you seen for you to say that it's worth it? Because like right, right now we just uh, plucked some corn, cooked it, and eat. <laughs> what, what can you? How, how, how can you enjoy something like this? Fresh corn. It's not sugary. It's not uh, artificial. It's natural corn eating. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And again, the medicine we need. Going to the drugstore and everything. They're all here. They're all around us. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes, and plus he said anything you plant grows. Like yes, yeah. these tomatoes, we are just doing the experiment. Yeah, look at that. They are all grown. We don't uh, even focus that much. Before I go, your final message to Africans. Whatever we are trying to do, we need to focus yeah. you know, and concentrate on it. And if we do those two things, you can do whatever you need to do and achieve your dreams. You know. And we need to believe in ourselves. Farm is, is, is not only for the poor. You know, we can farm and make money and then employ people. So see, we, can, we can get rid of all this un unemployment. People go to the university, finish education, and they can't have a job. We, we can incorporate all those people. 
and university graduates come together. Let's 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 do it together. How many people have you guys employed so far? So over here, we have four four people working on the poultry farm, and we have extra one person who work on the on the crop. In yeah, we have two people on my side. We have we have about three different taxi drivers that delivers uh, feed to us. We have water uh, people who deliver water to us. We have people who come and buy the eggs. People who come and buy uh, uh, chickens, sell. So we have many many people who we've engaged, and they are making money out from our farm. More than more than 30, 40 people. Yeah, to the youth, especially the males, um, I want you guys to stop investing in gambling and invest in agriculture. Yes, because agriculture is the future. Uh, my advice to the youth of Africa uh, is one thing that they should take note of is in whatever they are doing, they should just stick to it. Learn about it, just become a student of whatever you are doing, and you are good to go. Those who have the lands, if you know you can't do anything on the land, just release it for the young ones or <clears throat> those who are ready to farm on it. I think that's the greatest thing um, they will do for us as far as farming is concerned. Because without the land, there's no farming. My message for Africans old and young is we shouldn't just think about now. Um, having traveled a lot, I left Nigeria when I was 17, so I've, traveled, I've lived outside Nigeria for almost 30 years now. One thing I see is that Africans, we think about what we can eat now. And that's one of the major problems, right? We need to think about the future. So thinking about the future, we actually challenge you to be creative, to do something. Because now you see, like one of my brothers said, the youth should stop gambling. It's true, right? We need to sit tight and do what is right so that we can, you know, prevent things that will happen in the future that will not make us eat. So farming, is going to provide food. Like we just ate fresh corn now, you know, so We just let's ate fresh up. corn. <laughs> Since I'm here, I need fresh chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, go at it. <laughs> I, I, I want to say you guys are doing amazing yeah. and keep up the good work. Mm. But listen, I have a million audience and I know a lot of people are going to watch this video. Yeah. yeah. If somebody wants to be part of you guys, what are the steps he needs to follow? Because no, right now, the, the land that we have, the, the 100 acres, we are thinking about gradually developing it and farming on all of them. And beside that too, you know, the, there's a room for feed, like a feed processing plant around here. Because the more people join this poultry industry, we, we will stop buying food from outside. If somebody is, Building, like have a food processing feed meal. Feed meal over here. You know, somebody can plant the corn and then sell it to the feed mill. Then the feed mill will sell it to the poultry farmers. Yeah. You know, it will reduce the cost of transportation. So that is one thing that if anybody can come and set up like a feed mill, we appreciate it. If anybody has a tractor that they think, oh, we the tractor can help us. You can you can bring it, we can rent it. While we are using it, then maybe we pay you by the acre that we are using it for. Yeah. It will make the business go faster. And it's open for anybody too with a planter that we can attach to the tractor. You know, instead of doing 100 acres with a planter, you can do like 500 acres at a time. Mm. You don't have to struggle mm. with the hoe and other things to plant. You know? So if anybody wants to invest in those things, they can contact all of us, then maybe we sit down and go into how we can structure this into a long term. When I was having conversations with them, they shared one of their major challenges. Two weeks ago, we went to the, was it two or three weeks ago, we went to the market, we asked the lady, where are you getting your chickens yeah, from? Brazil. She straight up told us that from Brazil, and we told her we have some over here. She's like, if we can process it and bring it to her, she will buy them. And you don't have the... The processing equipment to do that. It. We don't have it, we have to do manual labor. And how many people, like if I bring a thousand people over here to work on 5,000 chickens, it's still going to take you about a week to try to finish that thing. And at that moment, I knew that I had a solution for them. 
So the next morning, I connected them with the owner of Point and Kill. This man right here is a very good friend of mine and is also more like a new dad to me. And he is building a meat processing plant right here in the Volta region, which is five minutes away from their farm, of which they themselves thought that this was owned by a Chinese person. Because this man that I'm talking about here, it's a very low-key man, hardly talk about himself. And this man right here has been running an agri-processing plant for so many years. And listen, the good news is that he's going to buy every single product that comes out of this farm. And that very day, I saw every farmer in there so happy, ready to expand their farms. You guys are finally okay, eh? Yeah, we are good. So I can live in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Wadamaya. Oh, I can live in peace. And man. this is why Wadamaya is here, your one and only connector to the world. I am Maya. Oh,